be talking about the power of the reticulocyte hemoglobin for predicting thalassemia traits. Okay. So I will not waste a lot of time on talking about reticulocyte hemoglobin as we have already discussed a lot about it. Just that reticulocyte hemoglobin is basically the hemoglobin which is present in the reticulocytes. And reticulocytes, as we all know, they basically mature for one to three days in the bone marrow and for one to two days in the peripheral blood. These are the various stages of the reticulocytes from the bone marrow stage to the peripheral blood stage. So this is what we look at. This is the reticulocyte which is in the peripheral blood and we try and pick up the reticulocyte hemoglobin from these reticulocytes. How we measure the reticulocyte hemoglobin is we use the scatter plot where the x-axis shows us uh, the fluorescence and the y-axis shows us the forward scatter. So these cells which have the low fluorescence and low scatter, these are the platelets and these are the RBCs. And the cells which are on the right hand side which have high fluorescence are basically the reticulocytes. So we have to calculate the hemoglobin in these reticulocytes using this uh, scatter plot. So one thing for sure that a lot of people have also discussed is that reticulocyte hemoglobin is an amazing parameter for iron deficiency. It can be iron deficiency purely because of patient having iron deficiency or it could be a functional iron deficiency that happens in patients with anemia of chronic disease. But clearly reflects that iron, it reflects the true status of the iron availability to the cells. One of the very, very beautiful parameters, but I'm not talking about the beauty of this parameter only in iron deficiencies. And in fact, we did a lot of data on normal CBCs also, and we found CBC completely normal, but only reticulocyte hemoglobin was low, and it correlated very well with the ferritin values also. So indicating that the, it was one of the earliest indicator of iron deficiency anemia. And the best part is it is not affected by any of the inflammatory processes like the ferritin or, or the, like the way ferritin increases. It is actually also a very early indicator like unlike the MCV, MCH, which actually reflect late once the patient has real iron deficiency. And also it's a very good parameter to do a, uh, basically to uh, evaluate the effectiveness of therapy. Like you give the iron and that's one of the first parameters to actually show a significant improvement in the reticulocyte hemoglobin. A parameter, I think there is no other parameter, no other test like this, one of the best parameters and at a very, very low cost. So, but it has a limitation. So I will actually be talking about the limitation and the limitation is that it is also low in beta thalassemia traits. So we did a study and in our study, Basically, the first part of the study was that we wanted to calculate the normal reticulocyte hemoglobin. So we took 300 samples, we ran it on the CBC analyzer for the reticulocyte and the CBC on Mindray 6,600 BC. Uh, we did a serum iron UIBC, TIBC, ferritin on COBAS 6,000. We also did a vitamin B12 and folate levels. And then we also did a HPLC on all these cases. The, the, the first part of the study which included the normal ones was when all this entire data was completely normal, we calculated the reticulocyte hemoglobin in them and we found that our values were 28.2 to 33.1 picograms. So this was the normal retic hemoglobin that we found in patients after doing all the tests. The second part of our study was, uh, of course, that we wanted to find out what is the reticulocyte hemoglobin in thalassemic traits. So we took about, uh, we took a lot, large number of samples and ultimately we came down to about 200 samples. Uh, we ran a CBC and the reticulocyte hemoglobin on uh, Cal 6500. We again did a serum iron TIBC and transferrin and uh, saturation and ferritin and we did a HPLC. Now based on this data, we actually selected only those patients where the MCV was less than 80. So we included only microcytic hypochromic irrespective of the hemoglobin like where there was some amount of microcytosis. Why we did that, I'll actually explain that to you later. But based on this, we actually divided the entire uh, study into two parts. One part was when the, thal when the HPLC was completely normal, there was no thalassemia trait. And the other part was when there was thalassemia trait. 
when there was thalassemia trait again we divided that population into two categories the first category was when there was a thalassemic trait but the serum iron studies were normal which indicated it was a thalassemia trait with no iron deficiency the second category was thalassemia trait with iron deficiency based on the iron studies and the third category of course was normal hplcs but since our mcv was lower on the lower side so this category included all the iron deficient anemics and also anemia of chronic disease so we have not trying to distinguish here between anemia of chronic disease or iron deficiency we put it as one category so we found out um that on an average in our first category where there was thalassemia trait with no iron deficiency our average hemoglobin our uh, average retic hemoglobin is about 21.4 in the second category where there was beta thalassemia trait with iron deficiency averagely the retic hemoglobin was about 20.4 and in the third category where there was iron deficiency anemia or anemia of chronic disease also averagely the retic hemoglobin was 21.5 now if i have to tell you the difference between these 321s i will say that the first category when the patient had only beta thalassemia trait most of the patients actually had a hemoglobin retic hemoglobin of 21 plus minus 1.5 whereas when you talk about patients who had iron deficiency anemia or anemia of chronic disease the retic hemoglobin depended on the severity of anemia say for example if a patient had mild anemia the retic hemoglobin will go down to 26 or 25 or 24 if it's moderate anemia it will be somewhere around 21 22 if it's kind of severe then it becomes 20 19 18 and it significantly goes down from there but if a patient has a thalassemic trait then the retic hemoglobin is around 21 only so we thought that uh, can we use this parameter to predict whether the patient is a thalassemic trait or not so to do this we actually compared the uh, menzer index in these three categories to our data so we calculate we took a menzer index is basically mcv divided by the rbc so we thought that uh, we took a cut off of 13 i mean like we did it with 12 we did it with 13 we did it with 14 so we realized that when we take a cut off of 13 we are actually able to pick up 79% of the thal traits in the first category that is the category when the patients had thalassemic trait but they do not have any iron deficiency the second category in which there was iron deficiency the menzer index sensitivity reduced to about 31% and we could not pick up more than that and the third category when there was an iron deficiency there were actually 5% cases which were falsely positive because these were the cases where their menzer index was less than 13 but they were not thal traits so this was the data based on the menzer index then of course we tried to calculate our data and uh, so this is what i call as a tina factor so we actually used the reticulocyte hemoglobin we multiplied it with the mcv because why i did this was that reticulocyte hemoglobin becomes abnormally low in cases of thal trait mcv also becomes low so we actually put it on the numerator to reduce the numerator and because the rbc value is always on the higher side in thal traits we accentuated the denominator by making it rbc square so we actually had a formula of reticulocyte hemoglobin multiplied by mcv divided by rbc square we took a cut off about 75 so we realized that in a first category where there was beta thalassemia trait with no iron deficiency and using a cut off 75 we could actually pick up 97% of thal traits when it was with iron deficiency we picked up about 63% of thal traits and in the third category the false positivity that means that patients who had iron deficiency and had a factor of less than 75 we actually picked up 11% cases which were falsely positive so if we compare the data we realize that in the three categories the sensitivity has significantly increased if we use the tina factor that is from basically 79% we increase the sensitivity to 97% in the second category that is the thalassemia trait with iron deficiency the sensitivity of picking up thalassemia traits increased from 31 to 63% almost double at the same time the false positivity also increased from about 5% to 11% but still our true positives increased markedly 
So based on this, I would say that reticulocyte hemoglobin still has a lot of potential and we can actually extract a lot more and we can actually have more data on this and do prospective studies. And it's a very useful parameter in even predicting that the patient is a thalassemic trait. So if I say what's my take home message? So I want to be very uh, short and crisp as Dr. Anil always tells me it should be short and crisp. The take home message is please follow the TINA factor, do a prospective study, give me a feedback about what you think about it and then we can publish a lot more than this. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tina. That was a wonderful presentation. And uh, the Tina fact, I have a question. Okay. Uh, how many the patients have you studied the Tina factor on? Okay, so we did the Tina factor on about 200 samples because we had the data of, uh, which included the iron deficient, which were 113, and the non-iron deficient, that means the thalassemia category with or without iron deficiency were about uh, 100 cases total. So roughly 100 on the non-thalassemics and 100 on the thalassemics. So 200 number, yeah. was this, and this we had the entire data. We had the HPLC and we had the uh, serum iron studies also on them. I think that should be published. That should be published. I think it's a very, uh, uh, yes, I think. But we want to do a prospective study using this cut, uh, this cut, cut off. With more number of cases, I think the authenticity also. Yes, increases. exactly. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Did you try modifying the Mensa to Tina? <laughs> I'm trying to it by <laughs> RBC square. <laughs> by making it RBC square, yes, yes. actually, we, I applied a lot of formulas. In fact, the first formula that I started trying was uh, the, hemo, the retic hemoglobin versus the hemoglobin. Because the retic hemoglobin goes significantly down compared to the hemoglobin. But we didn't, like, statistical analysis did not give us a lot of results. So we, we applied a lot of formulas, but then we finally reached the formula of our retic hemoglobin with, uh, with MCV. And... RBC square. So we increasing, we're trying to improve Menza. So I can say, I can give some credit to Menza for this for sure. So I can call it like a Tina Menza factor. Yes. <laughs> uh, Excellent presentation, Tina. Thank uh, you. It's a good marriage between red hemoglobin and Menza index. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I have a question. Did you try with some other factors like Srivastava index or Sagal index? No, 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 no. Okay, uh, all the studies between Menza to your Yeah, factor. I know, I know. But uh, see, uh, Segal index and actually uh, there was a time actually when I was with Kunal at that time and we tried to create a Dadu index and a Segal index that time. So uh, we actually had a lot of thalassemia data and then we tried to, obviously you know it's all modification of the Menzer index when we are trying to use either the RBC or we are using uh, the MCV and you know the RDW. So we are just trying to modify all those factors to create an index but I have not compared uh, because you know I, I think that uh, Menzer index is still a very sacrosanct index and has not been replaced by any other index. And this is a new parameter completely away from the indices which have been there till now. So, so I'm trying to just sort of again like the way you said, it's like a good marriage between uh, Menzer and retic hemoglobins. We should try and explore that a little more now. You try with the Srivastava index, it is more sensitive than Menzer. You think so? I, I, can you give me a little bit details about that? Because I have not compared uh, the Srivastava index at all. I'll share it with you. Uh, okay, we'll do that. Thank you for the inputs. Then I think I should uh, compare the data with Srivastava index also. Any more questions? Sorry? Serious modification to Tina's index. Okay. <laughs> no more questions? Okay. Yeah, thank you, but please do a prospective study and give me the feedback. I'll be happy. Yeah. Thank you.